Well, we're glad you're here. Thank you for being here at our first ever satellite simulcast in defense of marriage. We're here to protect marriage and to celebrate marriage tonight. Thank you. Thank you to all of you that are joining us. We're here in San Diego, and you're all over the state of California. The polygamists are waiting in the wings because if a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman based on the fact that you have the right to marry whoever you want to marry, then the polygamists are going to use that exact same argument, and they're probably going to win. And then I think about the damage done to our children, and our children are going to be taught in the schools that gay marriage is not just a different type of a marriage. They're going to be taught that it's a good thing. And, of course, we're destroying the pillar of our society. Well, let's ask Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council to help us on that. He takes us across the country to Massachusetts and see what he found out occurred there when they had same-sex marriage. Tony, take it away. Well, thanks, Pastor Jim. I'm standing here in front of the United States Capitol, and I bring you greetings from Washington, D.C. What we're finding out around the country is that few families are really thinking through the implications of same-sex marriage being legalized in their states. Based on what we now know from Massachusetts and from Canada, we can say that same-sex marriage affects every family in a community, and it confuses children. We know that families find themselves in some very awkward situations when even their elementary age children come home from school having been read a book about same-sex marriage that affirms it. If same-sex marriage is legalized, then it must be taught as normal, acceptable, and moral behavior in every public school. Now, if you don't believe me, not too long ago, we went to Massachusetts to talk to families about same-sex marriage and how it was impacting their children. The beginning of 2005, our son Jacob was going into kindergarten, and he came home with a diversity book bag. And in the diversity book bag was a book entitled Who's in a Family by Robert Scutch, and that introduces children to same-sex households. Now, wait a minute. Let me be clear. Your son is in kindergarten. Yes. And he was given a book about homosexuality and marriage? Yes. What, what was your first reaction when you saw this? When I saw the book, I was... Um, quite upset that uh, they would couch this as diversity and include it in a diversity book bag and, and not give me notification that they were going to be um, introducing this topic of homosexual relationships and homosexual behavior and uh, to my young five-year-old child. I was, I was um, very upset. I have the book right here. Who's in a family? It introduces children to such things as Clifford and her dad's partner, Henry. So when she would not um, acknowledge our parental rights in this area, we then went to our Judeo-Christian beliefs and our, our faith and said, well, you wish to affirm homosexuality um, to our son. You're presenting that which is sin as though it is not to our son, and we cannot allow that. Roberto, I have a question. What has it been like? Uh, was, it, was it 2003? Was that the year in which uh, same-sex marriage became legal? And what has happened in the state since then? Nothing less than a revolution, really, in terms of uh, the way homosexuality has progressed to the point that uh, now we have uh, in the uh, governorship of Massachusetts a person who is absolutely in favor of uh, homosexual marriage, in favor of the whole homosexual agenda, a governor who has uh, been elected, really, uh, by the strong support of uh, the homosexual lobby. We have um, in the field of education, homosexual teaching being uh, integrated more and more into the program of the schools. Our children being taught more and more to be acceptant of uh, the homosexual agenda. We are seeing uh, the people of Massachusetts being desensitized day by day concerning homosexuality and becoming more and more adjusted to the idea of uh, homosexual marriage being the law of the land and the homosexual agenda becoming more and more of a powerful element in the life of our uh, society. I want to thank you for coming on with us. This is, this is insightful because when we read the papers, they'll say nice things like, everything's wonderful, Massachusetts, people are all happy, uh, no calamities occurring, the, the sky did not fall. 
and we're getting a very deep, uh, sense, uh, a very different picture. The part that really gripped me that you said the most was when you said the issue of people are being desensitized. This is a generation that is losing the awareness of the difference between right and wrong. Tony, there's no way to compare the civil rights movement and the gay rights movement. You know, we live in a society in which no one wants to be called a bigot. No one wants to be seen as being intolerant and lashing out. And therefore, there's been an attempt to hijack the civil rights movement and to make it look like this is the same kind of thing, gay marriage, that we were dealing with with the blacks sitting in the back of the bus. But I'm offended at times by that comparison because I had no choice but to be black. I didn't choose to come into the world and live a deviant lifestyle. Today, we need to understand that this is just a PR gambit. And we need the church to rise up and be strong and come forth to protect the sacred right of marriage. To compare homosexuality to a civil right is to compare my skin with their sin. That's insulting, demeaning, and offensive. I believe it's even racist to compare my complexion to somebody else's uh, sin. Um, homosexuality is a choice and uh, skin color is not a choice. Uh, therefore, there is no comparison of the two. And it says in verse 20, 21, that Jesus says, how long has this been happening to him? He says, ever since he was a kid. The devil understands if I can get a kid, I got him. That's why they had the school, the, 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 the education in kindergarten. They didn't, even, they didn't even try to go to sixth grade, first grade. They went to kindergarten. Kindergarten. And right now, kids in kindergarten are being taught what we would call is perversion. And we sit around and let it happen. The books you saw, it's already in place. They're already being taught that. And in kindergarten, they're being taught if a little boy thinks he's a little girl, in the state of California, he is a little girl. 